guys, so today is the 27th of January, it's 2.40 in the afternoon. Nate was actually taking a nap because it's the end of his week and he had a pretty long week at work. Um, it's the end of my week as well, I'm on my um, weekend now, yeah. um, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, it's really hot here at the moment, it's actually super super hot. So. My hair's a little bit crazy because the humidity and everything just makes my hair look like crap. <laughs> Excuse my language, but it does. And you know what? I don't even care. I'm not feeling the best. I'm feeling a little bit under weather, so um, we'll see how I go um, with that. But it is what it is, you guys. Um, what I wanted to update you on is some knitting and... Um, some reading and everything like that. So I am still reading 56 Days by Catherine Ryan Howard, which is a COVID, uh, I guess you call it a thriller, I think, book. Um, okay, so here's the thing with this book, right? I actually purchased this book on Kindle, so I paid for it. And I am actually enjoying reading the book, but it's like, I think my mindset's just not in it, so I'm not picking it up as often as I should, but when I do pick it up, I'm enjoying myself and I'm reading it. So I'm not really that far in. I honestly haven't got much further than um, last time. So just a quick recap of what this book is about. It's about two people, a woman and a man, who bump into each other in a supermarket and decide to start dating as kind of but right as they start dating the pandemic hits and they decide to lock down together in his house because his house is bigger he has a two bedroom apartment whereas she lives in a studio apartment with a murphy bed <laughs> so that happens and then um the police get called in 56 days because there is a weird terrible smell coming from apartment one and when the police arrive they find a dead body this book does flip back from present day to 56 days prior 36 days prior that type of thing so you get to um hear the police dealing with finding the body in the very present moment and then you get to see how the couple like the two people um like their relationship goes that type of thing um so i've only gotten up to where they're currently in the apartment like the police are in the apartment and they're trying to figure out what has happened whether it's a murder or an accident they're not sure because it looks like he might have accidentally drugged himself and then he's fainted or passed out or whatever and then he's hit his head and died in the bathroom or was he killed we don't know yet they think it's a man but they're not entirely sure because the body looks like it's been there for about two weeks and decomposition and all that sort of gross stuff happens so they think it's a man but they're not entirely sure yet so they haven't confirmed for sure that it definitely is a man um but so that's kind of where I'm up to in 56 days then I've also started um another audiobook called Mount Mercy by Helena Newberry um I actually do have a copy of this on Kindle Unlimited I think it is Kindle Unlimited um, I can't remember if I saw it on Kindle Unlimited first or not. I think I saw it on Kindle Unlimited and then I decided I wanted to see if there was an audiobook and I found it on Scribd. So I'm listening to it on Scribd. And basically what it is is we have two main characters, uh, male and female, and they are working in a hospital. Our female main character, her name is Amy Beckett and the male main character is, oh, I can't think of his first name, but his last name is Carrigan. He is Irish with an Irish accent and she is um, from, I believe, Colorado. And they're in this tiny little town in Colorado somewhere in this tiny little 
little hospital and he is I think on his last chance because he's been fired from three other hospitals for various things. Um, I haven't got too far into the book so I'm not entirely sure all the things that he's done yet. Um, I believe he was in the army or one of the military forces at some point in his life um, and so I believe he's kind of gone through some messed up things and that's kind of made him the way he is now because he kind of um, emotionally shuts himself off from people and kind of portrays himself as this like cocky guy who doesn't care about anything and only wants one night stands and like doesn't care for romance that type of thing um you do find out very quickly though that he did have a wife and a daughter and i think i'm not 100 percent sure yet because i haven't got far enough into the book but i think they have been killed or have died in an accident or something to that effect and then Amy, she is a surgeon who is an introvert and doesn't like people. So she stays up in her surgery tower, away from everyone, except for she gets thrown into having to deal with a natural disaster. So a blizzard happens and the whole town gets locked in um, and can't get out of this tiny little town because they're snowed in basically. And when they're snowed in, a criminal ring happens to also be snowed in in the town with them. So that's kind of as far as I have gotten in the book so far. It is um, a romance and it is, um, so far I would say, a little bit on the steamier side of things. No sex has happened exactly, but both Corrigan or Carrigan and Amy have um, described in pretty like descriptive detail of like the sex things that they want to do to one another. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Um, it's a little bit more of like a spicy romance. Um, but I am actually really, really enjoying um, listening to this book. It's really good so far. So I'm excited for that. Um, that's kind of all of the books that I have on the go at the moment. I have started a new knitting project and I am using some of the birthday yarn that I got, um, that they got me. I'm using the Motivira Reflection yarn, which is this brand here. And it's in this colorway here. It is beautiful. So this is the Brights colorway, I think. Yeah, Brights. I picked that colorway because it reminds me of the beach. And then I have this book called The Knitter's Year, 52 Simple Seasonal Knits by Debbie Bliss. This is what it looks like. Um, I own this book. I bought it a few weeks back now. Um, well, actually last year now, yeah, before Christmas. And in here, there is this beautiful pattern and it's just called a lacy scarf and it's in the summer section. This is what it looks like. It's actually the pattern that's on the front of the book. It's beautiful, it's such a simple pattern as well to, um, to make. But what I decided to do was I started off with this pattern because it creates a lace pattern, but I didn't wanna do the entire scarf in said pattern so I just did the end of it for like a little bit of like you know detail and then the rest of the scarf is just going to be plain knitting um so I'll show you what it looks like you'll have to excuse me because the yarn itself likes to fold in on itself when you're knitting so you can see it's folding in on itself so this is definitely going to have to be blocked you can see but this is what the pattern that looks like down the bottom. So you've got the lace pattern here, and then I only wanted to do a small amount of the lace pattern. So I stopped here and then just started knitting. So knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl. And then on the back, it's just like that. Um, this is definitely, in my opinion, um, not exactly a true roving yarn, but I'm gonna call it a roving yarn because down here, you can see it's super fluffy. Then you can see here it gets really thin and then it starts to thicken up a bit. 
and then you can see there are patches throughout here where you've got these really big thick stitches and then thin stitches um and just yeah it's beautiful i love 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 how this is turning out i cannot wait to see this finish this is going to be for me um i will have to block this once i am finished because like i said you can see on the back how the edges curl in on itself so it looks super skinny but it's not it like it's just the yarn really likes to curl in on itself um so yeah there's that so that's what i'm working on at the moment i am loving it i will say i've never used this yarn before the motor bureau reflections yarn and it is um what is it um let's see it's 100 percent acrylic and it is really soft but it sticks to itself like you can see um here unraveling see it it like sticks to itself um so that's a little bit of a pain but for the most part it's fine um it's nice and easy to knit with it glides excuse me hiccup glides so well on my knitting needles i'm using my new ones that i got for my birthday these are the square Addy. I think they're called novel knitting needles they're the ergonomic ones love 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 these are a five millimeter needle the yarn calls for a four mil but i'm using a five because i wanted not a, like a super tight knit i wanted a little bit of a looser knit um and i think it is working absolutely beautifully i'm so excited to see this knit up especially because like i decided to only use a small element of that particular uh pattern from that knitting book i actually love knitting books you guys i have um only three two no four i have four knitting books so i have um I actually have to do a video, I think, on the knitting books that I own. I have a Mittens of Latvia um, pattern book. I love it. It's beautiful. I have the Harry Potter Knitting Magic. Also gorgeous. I bought that for myself for my birthday. And then I bought this one last year, the Knitter's Year. Um, this is seasonal knitting so they has a section for each season of the year and it's great i love this um i just oh it's so beautiful like just so so beautiful and i was lucky enough to actually pick this book up from a discount bookstore at one of the shopping centers and i only paid seven dollars for this beautiful book you guys when i saw it it was the last one there i had to have it and the guy that owns the bookstore um, served me when I was putting this through and he's like, oh, you're so lucky. He's like, that's the last one. Um, he's like, we get a lot of those in at Christmas time, like knitting books. And he's like, they sell so fast. So I was really excited to get that one. And then I have another one, which is more of like um, a beginner's knitting book, because even though I've been knitting now for about two or three years, I still consider myself a beginner because i actually taught myself to knit by watching youtube videos so there's still a lot that i don't know so i still consider myself a beginner and i thought a beginner's knitting book was really handy because i have so many useful like tips and tricks and stuff in there as well as little patterns as well um so those are the knitting books that i have i do have uh, my eye on a few on amazon that i might buy once i can afford to um but that's that and then i've been working on my coloring in you guys because i bought this book for my birthday which i showed in my birthday vlog i know it's a christmas book but you guys know how obsessed i am with christmas and i had to put this on my christmas um wish list and gave it to nate and nate did try and get this for me for christmas but i live in australia and getting books at the moment is freaking impossible there is a huge shortage of books and also the prices of books since COVID has happened has skyrocketed so high. So he wasn't able to get me this for Christmas, but then I managed after 
Christmas to find it on Amazon and I bought it. So I was so excited. But I've been working on a picture in here. Um, I've been working on this picture right here. I love it. I think this is turning out really fantastic. And yeah, I've just been really enjoying um, coloring. I think coloring is such a underrated activity to do. I really love it. And I do have other coloring in books. Um, and I have a bunch more in my Amazon cart as well that I want to get at some point because I love them. I really do. I just enjoy doing coloring in. It's such a relaxing way to like just wind down after a stressful day, if you have any anxiety, what have you. Yeah. So there is that. Um, so that's kind of it. I am going to go to Spotlight and um, get, they have a brand of pencil there called Jazz Art and I want to get um, a little bit more of a higher quality pencil. Now Jazz Art I am not going to consider it as like a premium brand because ideally I would love to get the Faber-Castell Polychromos ones. But to get the 120 set, it's like $290, I believe. If I want the tin, if I want it in a special wooden case, it's only $400. So I can't afford that. <laughs> so I did some research and I found a brand called Jazz Art, which is pretty readily available here in Australia. And based on some of the reviews I watched on YouTube, it seems like it is a fairly good quality for the price point that you're paying. So um spotlight does sell them so i'm gonna get some tonight if they have any in stock because nate's gonna take me there um to do that i'm also gonna have a look at the yarn for a while like you know i can't not look at the yarn if i can and i try every time i've gone to spotlight lately but there's always been some jackass in my way and excuse me for saying that but the reason why i say this is because for the last two weeks in a row I've been to Spotlight, I have had people deliberately kind of shove their way in front of me to kind of like stop me looking at stuff. So every time I'd go down a different aisle to avoid those people, they would then come and follow me and then get in front. It's just been freaking annoying. <laughs> and it's just like, I'm really at the point where I just want to turn around and tell them to back the F up because like... I'm not harassing you while you shop, so just leave me be. And like, I'm looking at the yarn, and I can damn well tell you that the people that are doing this to me are not knitters or crocheters or any type of fiber um, creator at all. I feel like they're just deliberately being dicks. Excuse my language, but like, you all, like, we've all had this experience with these types of people. So, yeah. <laughs> So if someone does this to me tonight when I go again, I'll lose my shit, people, because <laughs> I'm so over rude people. Like, you don't have to be such a dick. Um, so if I can, and I'm not going to guarantee it, but if I can, I will try and get some footage of when I'm there. I'll try. I'm not guaranteeing it, though, because most likely there'll be someone there and I won't be able to film. So, yeah. So that's everything you guys. I'm gonna get going because I want to do a few things. Nate's still taking a nap. Um, and yeah, I like when he's napping because it's just peace and quiet and I can do things that like require my full attention because while I love him, he has this habit of only wanting my attention when I'm in the middle of doing something important. <laughs> we all have these moments, people. Um, so I'm going to take this opportunity to do some stuff while he's asleep. So yeah. So anyway guys, I will catch up with you later. Bye.